So now that you have Fusion 360 opened, we're going to be going over the interface in this video. I'm going to show you generally where all of the tools are, all the things that I use all the time, all the things that I very rarely touch, and all the shortcuts in between. Uh, we're going to start off by going into the cloud-based portion. This is the files and where to find them. So we're going to be going up to the top left-hand corner where we've got this kind of nine square grid. This is our data panel and this is where we can access all of our files. So all of our files, uh, you can categorize it just like any file system you have on your computer where you go, oh, these are all of my uh, metal working files uh, where you've got all of your parts and all of your assemblies. We'll go into what all that means in a little bit. But at the very bottom, uh, the very bottom you also have uh, some samples where you can go and practice out in some of the more specific parts of CAD. Uh, but this is where we're going to be saving all of our information to. Uh, continuing on, we also have all of our file savings, undo, redo, common things you'll find in almost any software. And then just below that, we have got our browser. Now, our browser is looking very empty right now because we haven't actually made anything right now. So we'll touch on this in a little bit, but right around here is going to pop up with our sketch and our bodies. Sketches are the CAD lingo for any 2D design. You can kind of think of it like a blueprint. And then you've also got bodies, which is associating any 3D objects that you've already made. So for example, if you sketched a square and then extruded it up into a cube, then you would have one sketch and one body. Uh, this is also where you can put in your units. So everywhere that you see this little triangle, it's uh, a little area where you can expand it. So document settings, uh, currently all of my units are in millimeters. If I wanted to change that, I can click this little button next to it. And I've got this little pop-up. Now this thing is called a dialog box. Um, Fusion 360 loves to have as many dialog boxes as possible. It's basically just saying, hey, don't worry about all of the thousands of buttons in the software, just focus on this little bit. Uh, going down, we also have a very empty timeline right here. Uh, as we work on our little project today, this is going to build up and all the little icons that we have are also the exact same icons we have up here in our toolbars. We'll go over that in a little bit. Uh, but up in the top, we have this little gray square that says design. Uh, because we're doing computer aided design, that's the only tab we're gonna be working in today. That's basically where I live the whole time. Uh, but within Fusion 360, we've also got a bunch of other things we can play around with. Um, if you are really into generative design, if you don't know what it is, I highly recommend looking it up. It is very, very cool. It is the direction that we're going with uh, very, very specific parts uh, of manufacturing where you can basically run a simulation on a part and it will 3D print only where you need material. Um, the, uh, the helicopter that's on Mars that just launched uh, I believe back uh, last year, um, because that needed to be as light as possible, I believe it has three 3D printed parts on there and it was used with generative design. So a very, very cool part. Uh, but we also have things like rendering, animation, simulation, manufacturing and drawing. Uh, these are things that I don't touch on all the time and we're just going to be staying in the design area. But if you'd like to experiment and kind of play around in that aspect, I really recommend digging into it because it is a lot of fun. Um, moving onwards, on the bottom, we have got all of our navigation center. This is where we can zoom, pan, look at all of our objects. Uh, very quickly, I'm just going to make a box just so you guys know what's going on. We'll be going over exactly what I'm doing right now in a little bit. So don't worry about any of that. I just want something to kind of look at. Uh, so uh, down here, we've got things like orbiting, looking at, panning, zooming in, uh, all very, very common objects. but I basically never use this navigation bar right here. I basically always use my keyboard and my mouse. For zooming in and out, you can use your scroll wheel to go back and forth. If you want to uh, highlight something, you can click with your left mouse uh, and well, do all of that. Um, if you want to actually pan, you can click and hold the scroll, uh, the scroll wheel to move all around. But the most important thing is something called orbiting. And I know we did it in the Cura stage, but it's a little bit different. Uh, for us, we're gonna be holding down shift on our keyboard and clicking our scroll wheel. And that'll allow us to orbit all the way around our parts. So I use all of these features uh, all at the same time if I need to look at really specific parts uh, and exactly how they look in all different areas. Uh, so we'll be using that all the time. 
Um, the other way to look at uh, parts or whatever you're making uh, is this little thing up here. It is called a view cube and you can click and drag it. And this is also a really quick and, quick and easy way uh, to look at your objects in all different planes. Uh, so when, we talk, when we're working with uh, computer aided design, we are generally focusing on three different planes that are gonna intersect the X, Y, and Z coordinates. Um, if you study the Cartesian coordinates in algebra, guess what, this is where it comes in, where you can click directly and look at the top, the right, the front uh, angles, everywhere that you want to, or you can also move your, move your cursor to this and then there's a little house icon and this gives you a nice directly uh, 45 degree angle going downwards. This is called an isometric view. Um, and then everything else in here, all of the toolbar on the top, we're gonna to be going into it in a little bit more depth because all of them do have pull downs and we've got a lot of different tools on there. Trust me, we won't be going into every single one, but I am gonna be going into the ones that you'll be using basically all the time. And these are tools that you'll be using to make all of your objects. Hey guys, thank you very much for checking out our intro series to CAD modeling using Fusion 360. If you'd like to learn more about Fusion 360 and all of the exciting projects you can make using this tool, then consider investing in yourself and your time by purchasing the rest of this course where we'll work on CNC projects, photorealistic rendering, animated moving models, and much, much more. Within this program, you'll be following a cohort of fellow makers while working in weekly group sessions where you'll be receiving help through curated Discord servers, weekly office hours through Zoom with our fellow CAD class team, where we can answer any questions you may have, along with up-to-date PDFs and videos to assist you along the way. Thank you guys so much, and I'll see you on the next one.